Hello everyone and welcome to my bar. My name is Ansel Birch, the Indecisionist, and I will be your dungeon barkeep today. Now, I may be no ex expert mixologist, but I am tending bar in a cave, so you know I'm willing to get into some weird stuff. And frankly, I didn't bring any of my recipes or call list with me, so if you want a drink today, I'm afraid I'm going to have to make one up as we go along. But what I do have, I'm not completely unprepared. I've got a pile of bar stuff, I've got a load of liquor and mixers, and I've got a set of gaming dice to help me pick between all of those things. So, what do you say? I will roll the dice, put together the cocktail that the dice choose, and I'll even try it before I even suggest that you ever drink one. What do you say? Will you try it? Sounds like a deal. All right, so let's go ahead and roll a d4 to choose an essential mixer. All right, that is a four, which is juice. All right, so we're gonna put juice into this cocktail. That's exciting. Uh, but what should we garnish it with? Let's go with a D6 to choose a garnish. Four. All right. Four. Cherries. Okay. Juice and cherries. This is this is shaping up to be fun. Uh, but what should we what should we put in as a less essential mixer? There's a lot out there. Uh, you can see I've got a whole list here. Some of which sound like they would go very poorly with juice and cherries. Uh, what do you want to bet? That's what happens right now. Burnett. <laughs> yep, juice cherries and fernet. Yikes. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. But what kind of liquor goes into this? Now, fernet is already a liqueur, so we're already putting some proof in there. But what's going to take us the rest of the way? Let's roll a d10. That's a 10. Now, 10s explode, which means I have to roll this die two more times and add both liquors to this cocktail. Nine, vodka. Okay. And six, tequila. I'm in danger. Okay. Okay. This is gonna be an experience. I, I hope you are seated comfortably because I suddenly am not. All right, let's move on. Let's do some edutainment. Let's learn something about bartending. Lord knows I need to. Here's our list of bar terms that we can go through. Seven is float. Uh, a float is actually a really cool uh, bar technique and it's when you layer liquors and mixers on top of each other based upon their specific gravity and you allow them to separate into layers uh, so that you can float one thing on top of, the, of another. Now you can do full layering. Uh, float specifically is usually when you mix um, your whole cocktail together and then you float something else on top of it. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do that today. I'll certainly think about it. Maybe that's how Maybe that's how the vodka's going to get on there. Uh, but let's see. We'll see how it all comes together. But before we do that, before I make any decisions about whether or not I'm going to float anything, we got to pick a name for this monstrosity. I'm going to roll a d20 on this table right over here. And let's see what we get. Nat 1. Got a lot of that going around. Witches Wake. I have a feeling this is going to live up to that name. All right. So let's... Go ahead and put this together. I'll see you at the bar top cam. All right, we're gonna start with lime juice. So I'm going to get out my cutting board here and roll my lime. I'm gonna do the, the juice of a whole lime here. And I'm gonna shake today's cocktail. So we're going to put the cut side down and I don't know if you can see the cloud of lime uh, zest oils that just flew off of there. That was, that was beautiful. Nice, fresh lime. One of the reasons that you want fresh lime is for those oils. They really add something to the flavor of the cocktail. 
Uh, if you can do fresh lime, always do fresh lime. All right, so we've got our lime. Just move this off to the side. We've got tequila. We're going to do one ounce pours of our liquor for this one. And I'm going to float the vodka. So there's our tequila. And now for net. Now, for, I saw uh, some question in the live chat, which for those of you watching on YouTube, if you'd like to get in on the live chat as it goes on, you can uh, join me for my next cocktail a thon. Uh, I will put information about that on indecisionist.com slash dungeon barkeep, which is linked in the doobly doo. All right, so we're going to do an ounce of Fernet. Fernet is an Amaro, um, it's a liqueur uh, based around herbs. Uh, and I do mean like lots and lots of traditionally Eastern European herbs. Uh, this one claims to be a digestive created during the Habsburg dynasty in the 19th century. Um, and uh, it frequently has like, uh, like just like a really aggressive herbaceousness to it. Um, it's sort of in the same family as... Um, like a Besque or a Malort, but obviously significantly less uh, aggressive in many ways than than those famously are. Uh, but yeah, so that's Fernet. Uh, if you want to know more about Fernet, uh, there is a one-shot that I put together, which I will link in the doobly-doo, uh, in which I did a tasting and some history around Fernet. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pop two cherries into my tin. And I think that the cherries, and I think the cherries are gonna be important. So I'm going to go ahead and muddle the cherries into this liquor. So I'm gonna take this, this tool is called a muddler. There are less aggressive muddlers out there, but this is the one I really like. It's got those little spikes, so it really breaks up the, the fruit. Um, muddling is exactly what it sounds like. You're just squishing the fruit down, breaking it up into smaller pieces, releasing the juices and flavors into the cocktail. It's just a smart thing to do. All right. So there's that. That's the whole cocktail except for the vodka. So we're going to go ahead and shake it. Pop a few D6 of cold damage. And there we go. Malkith Soldier in the chat uh, during the live stream uh, is commenting on how much it makes sense to have cocktails in a fantasy setting. And I have to say, I agree. Uh, it makes a lot of sense because there are a lot of, uh, as Malkith says, a lot of cultures coming together and scarcity is less of an issue in a lot of fantasy settings than it is in the shared history of, uh, of our world. Uh, so, uh, availability, trade, a lot of that is, is made easier with, you know, magic, with ready access to magic. Uh, all right, so here is our base cocktail. Now, we are going to attempt to do a float. And I'm going to up the, da the danger level by trying to do a float by hand, because the bar top cam is not going to show it to you very well. Uh, but yeah, I think that today's cocktail is an especially good example because it is, I mean, we're putting in vodka, which is uh, frequently associated with uh, 
you know, the Slavic part of the world uh, in our real world. We've got Fernet, which is a Slavic product, but it's primarily consumed, I understand, uh, in places like Argentina, uh, which is really interesting. Uh, if you watch the most recent Suicide Squad movie, it made a show up in there. It's frequently mixed with Coke. Um, we've got tequila, which is, of course, a Central American beverage. We're putting in cherries, which, I mean, cherries grow all over the place as far as I understand it. I don't know that there's a huge regionalization there. Uh, these ones are from North America. So, you know, yeah. so we're, we're almost doing a, an ape of that um, with this cocktail. We're bringing together elements from a lot of different parts of the world. Uh, all right, so what I'm going to try to do is float this vodka on top of this cocktail whilst holding the cocktail in the air because I want you to see it happening. So I need to... Now, the big question is, will this even work? Okay. So. There we go. All right. So here we are for your amusement. All right, and there, oh, and you can almost see it. Can you see it on the camera? You can, all right. So do you see this, this line here? That's the cocktail we just mixed. Everything above it is clear vodka. Let's see if I can get that on camera for you. Everything above that line is clear vodka. So there we have it. That is a float. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm a little bit chuffed at myself for managing that. It was not easy. Okay. But yes, because the uh, gravity of vodka is lighter than the mixed uh, cocktail with all of the heavy uh, mixers that went in there, um, the vodka floats on top quite nicely. So there you go. There's a little, little science in your cocktail. Uh, and because we are garnishing with cherries, I am going to go ahead and garnish with an exotic looking cocktail pick. <clears throat> so now all that's left is to see how it tastes. Oh, God. Oh, wow. <laughs> God. I wish I could say I was playing it up for the camera. Um, wow, I, I have drunk, I have had a lot of weird, gross, awful, awful things on this show, but wow. Um, Ah. Yeah. Okay. Um. <clears throat> so for starters, would I recommend this cocktail? No. No. I. I would not. I would not recommend this cocktail. Um. This is um, very clearly to me a cocktail that is consumed by um. Infernal creatures, uh, demons, devils, um, uh, 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 the 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 lords of the deep. It looks very classy. I mean, look how look how freaking pretty it is. It's a beautiful color. It had that little stripe for no reason whatsoever. Uh, it's got cherries on top. Um, like this is this is a demon's cocktail for sure. Just for sure, for sure. Um, it's also, uh, it tastes entirely of burning and, uh, and regret. Um, uh, my regret specifically for having done and uh, many of the things I've done recently.
Oh God. Um. Oh. Oh. All right. So the witch is wake. Um. I think the witch is wake is what you have to drink in order to get the witch to do you a favor. Um. You know, you're 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 you've traveled across the wastes. You've come. Finally, I think it's a desert. You've come finally across the desert to the the um, witch's encampment, which appears out of nowhere. Just poof, and there she is with a with a building and the whole deal. And and there the witch is, and she's expecting you. She's known you were coming, and she's got the cocktail shaker in hand. And she goes, Ah, you've come all this way. Well, it wouldn't do to let you remain so parched. Drink up before we talk. And she hands you this glass of nightmares. And I think it does fortitude damage. Um, I think you probably have to roll against being, um, I don't know, charmed or incapacitated or something. Um, But yeah, I think this is absolutely something that you you have to drink in order to get someone to do something for you. Um, that feels like it's um, like it, it it makes sense. Alternately, if it's a witch's wake, um, maybe the the bitterness of of the experience of being a witch, like you know, you it's a hard life being a witch. People don't respect you. You get treated poorly uh, in some places. People sometimes you know. Uh, are mean to you because you're, you know, you've, you've got these powers that they can't quite understand. And so at the wake of a witch, in order to sort of commiserate the other witches, drink this bitter, 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 harsh uh, cocktail as a uh, an homage to the hard life and bitterness that they know their uh, sibling uh, lived through. Um, so that's maybe a more positive way to use the Witch's Wake in your campaign, um, but man. Oh, I keep thinking maybe if I drink more of it, I'll like it, and um, so far that's not the case. Um, so yeah, uh, what do you think? You gonna try this one at home? Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all the things YouTubers tell you how to do, and... Um, until next time, drink adventurously.